Good, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Dr. Jonna Talon Sullivan, and I'm the host today for Totus Tuus Evangelization Network. And uh, we are very honored today to have uh, Father Lawrence Carney uh, with us to talk about the Holy Face, the Shroud Turin. And um, uh, before I get going on his uh uh, interview. Let's uh, let me just let you know that Totus Tuus is in a platform that hosts um, uh, mystics and prophets and evangelists and authors and um, priests and nuns and people of all um, holy works of God to join join us all together for this glorious coming of God. And this is uh, wonderful how we become educated and we draw together as, as one in this spiritual community. That being said, hi, Father Cardi, how are you? I'm fine, Jana. Yeah, so thank you for coming. I'm going to do a little introduction uh, about sure. Father Carney uh, for our, our viewers. <clears throat> Father Carney was born in November of 1975, November 11th in uh, Wichita, Kansas. And then he was baptized a cradle Catholic. And he was ordained back in May uh, of uh, 2007, May 26. <clears throat> he attended actually Saint Mount, Mount St. Mary's uh, Seminarian in Emmitsburg, Maryland. He served six years as an associate pastor and, um, and pastor. And in 2013, he served as the chaplain for the Benedictines of Mary, Queen of Apostles in St. Joseph, Missouri. He started the League of St. Martin, uh, whose mission is to spread awareness of the devotion of the Holy Face by three aims, um, one being reparation, two reverence, and three re uh, reversion. <clears throat> Excuse me. He is an author, and he has authored a very um, important book, and I hope you talk about your book today, Father. Sure. But he has authored several books, but the one uh, recently is Walking the Road to God, Remedy and the Secret of the Holy Face. Uh, he returned back to Wichita in 2002 to help the Benedictines of Mary start a convent there, and he is the apostolic priest of Wichita. He has a website, which I think I'm going to say right up front where everyone will want to uh, look at. It is... Um, martinians.org www.martinians.org and then um, his book again is walking the road of god remedy and the secret of the holy face so thank you father i'm so uh, honored and privileged to have to be here and to ask you some questions about the holy face and um and so first let's let's start uh what is the arch uh, confraternity of the Holy Face. Okay, so the Arch Confraternity of the Holy Face is similar to an organization called the Confraternity of the Rosary. So when people pray the Rosary, that's great. And there's a, a level people can go up in praying the Rosaries by joining a confraternity, which is under the auspices of the Dominicans. And people can do that in whichever region they live in. So the province I signed up for the rosary was, I think, in Ohio, because I'm in Kansas. Now, an arch confraternity means that it's it's just a high level of other confraternities. So the arch confraternity, the Holy Face, was established by Pope Leo XIII in 1885. And its object of devotion is the Holy Face of Jesus Christ. And specifically, the Vela Veronica, not to be confused with the Vela Monopello, which is in Italy, and the Shot of Turin, which is also in Italy, in Turin. But this is the Vela Veronica, which deals with the passion, not so much the death like the other one does, the Turin, but the passion. And so this arch confraternity has for one of its members, St. Therese of Lisieux, of the little child Jesus and of the Holy Face. So this arch is also very much uh, 
promoting the revelations that were given to Sister Mary St. Peter in the 1840s. We might talk about that more later. Okay. But people can join the Arch Confraternity by enrolling with a form and sending it to the center, which is in Tours, France. So that's that's a summary of what the Arch Confraternity of the Holy Face is. And what it does is it helps people to get more devoted to the Holy Face of Jesus Christ, which we know that our end goal is the beatific vision, to see God face to face. So this devotion helps us to see how important the face of God is. For me, and personally, I read the Psalms once a week, and the name of the face of God, the face of God, I should say, is mentioned over 700 times. And it just pops out at me now, and it never did before. And that's part of the grace that comes when people are in the arch Arch-Compatory of the Holy Face. Wow. Wow. Uh, it's interesting that you say the veil of, uh, of Veronica. Um, you know, when I was reading a lot even about Menapello, uh, they were saying that the, the name Veronica may not have been actually the name of the person Veronica holding the, the veil. But I love, uh, I love the fact of um, St. Therese of, of Child Jesus and of the Holy Face, because I, I think I mentioned to you that I'm a um, third order Carmelite, and that was my name, child of all generations and of the Holy Face. Yeah. So uh, it, it me, it's very special to me. And I'm really excited to hear more about this. Um, so why, I understand you want to get 1 million people to enroll. Why do you want to get 1 million people? Well, we're humans and we're, we're physical beings, we're spiritual beings, but some, a goal is something that certain people can drive at. And it, it's like, it's sort of like a hook. You know, when you catch a fish, you have a hook. Um, but it's like it's to hook souls to want to get into this devotion. And, and it's sort of like, here's the goal. And if you get in, you'll learn about how to get to that goal. Well, it's just it's just a kind of a, a breaking the ice. But it's, it's a practical thing, too, because in these revelations, a sister is told by our Lord that our Father in heaven is very displeased with the human race back in the 1840s, with two sins, blasphemy and profanation of Sundays and holy days of obligation. And Jesus said, my father is going to punish the world not so much with the elements as he's done in the past. He'll still do that. But he said he's going to punish the world with revolutionary men. And so that's why this devotion is so important right now because it seems like we've had a, a dress rehearsal to world revolution with communism um, attaining all of its goals. Mm -hmm. And one of the persons involved with the beginning of the Arch Confraternity, he's a, a venerable. His name is Leo de Pont. And the Communist Manifesto came out right at the time these revelations were coming out, in I believe 1848. And when Venerable Leo de Pont saw the Communist Manifesto, he was a prophet. He said, if these people get what they're claiming, they're going to enslave the whole world and close our churches. So he said that 170 years ago, and that's what happened for uh, a few months and I don't think it's over yet and I think that God is giving us this punch punishment so that people that are good will wake up and become very fervent mm -hmm. and I think this is where I really want to be an apostle of the holy face and try to get a million people to become more fervent because that's the job of a priest I, I say this all the time I copy a priest named father wolf who probably copied it from someone else because preachers are, we're like, our patron saint of St. Dismas, you know, the good thief, we steal things from people. So I'm in cells. I'm not in management. You know, I'm, I promote Jesus Christ 
and him crucified and salvation. I don't manage who gets to be in what parish or what. That's for bishops. So I'm just a low-level salesman. So I'm trying to get a million people into this. Wow. And so Sister Marie de Saint-Pierre, um, she's also one. Of, that's who you were talking about before. She's one of the other main players with Venerable Leo Dupont, right? She's the one that received the revelations. Okay. Venerable Dupont was someone who propagated her revelations when they were sealed in the arch um, diocese archives because they were sealed for 40 years wow where do we where can we see her messages or her um words given to her yes, so summary is my book right here the secret of the holy face then there's a book called the golden arrow and it's put out by tan i think it's still in print but there you've got a good summary of the revelations of Sister Mary St. Pierre. Then there's an abridged editions, which I don't recommend yet, but I, I, I think the Golden Arrow is the best place to start for people because that's where I started. Someone gave me, someone sent me a copy from North Carolina and I read it and I was hooked. So is, is The Secret of the Holy Face, is that's the book you wrote, right? Yeah. Okay. The Holy Face, that's the book I wrote. And where do we get that? We ask people to go to Tan Publishers. Okay. And in the website. same way, the Golden Arrow, correct, right? Yes, same publisher, Tan Publishers. To read that. Um, so uh, why do you think the this devotion, now the, I'm not sure what's involved in, in this devotion, Um so I know you mentioned there are three, um, the three aims mission is, you know, awareness of devotion is, is through reparation, reverence, and reversion. I was thinking maybe you could expand a little bit about what those, what that, that means, you know, uh, does, how does the devotion work towards that? Sure, John. So reparation is the main object of the devotion to the Holy Face. Because blessed uh, Pope Pius IX said, I think it was in 1849, that reparation is destined to save society. Now, some people may ask, well, Father, what is reparation? Well, let's get real basic. The four ends of sacrifice are thanksgiving, petitioning, adoration, and reparation. And when I read the spiritual masters of the spiritual life reparation is usually the last of the four ends of sacrifice that people are drawn to because that one requires the most suffering and suffering is the highest form of love mm -hmm. so reparation means to repair the relationship between our human family and god the father so it really looks upon those first three commandments uh, the sins of idolatry, of blasphemy, and irreverence. So we make reparation for mankind in general, com committing those, those sins. And we want to repair that relationship because we know that the story of Cain and Abel, you know, what did Cain say when, when God came to him? Well, who is my brother? Well, no, we're everyone's Brother, we are human family. God put us together on this world to have fraternal charity. And so we make reparation for people that are blaspheming God, that are that are committing idolatry in the highest places, even in the church. And for those that are just irreverent, you know, making fun of his divine liturgies, making fun of the rosary or other sacramentals. So that's what reparation is. So this devotion is a blueprint of how God wants us to make reparation. And Jesus gives us a lot of guides of how to do that. And he says that the fruits of those who become good repairers will overthrow the revolution against God. So that's how reparation works. And if you look at the Old Testament in Ezekiel, there is a, a verse that says, 
basically, if there's there's a few good men, that the, God will then allow their enemy, the good men, to take over the enemy. So he says, if there's five good men, they will take down 100 of the enemy. But if there's 100 good men, then God will allow them to take down 10,000 of the enemy. So I used to be in numbers growing up. And that's exponential uh, overthrow of, of evil. And in this devotion, Jesus told Sister Mary St. Pierre, I don't want so much the death of the sinner, but their conversion. So it's it's a warfare. It's, it's, it's putting on the spiritual gloves and fighting for God's honor and his majesty. Wow, that's great. That's that's very powerful. And then what about uh, the reverence and the reversion? How does that work? Okay. So one of those things I mentioned was idolic was um, irreverence. Mm -hmm. So in order to make reparation for irreverence, we should try to be reverent as best we can. And that's why I say the Latin Mass exclusively because it is so reverent. I used to say the Novus Ordo, but the Latin Mass is just, I'm a, a kind of a contemplative soul, and it really does nurture that life. The Latin was hard to get over, but that is part of reverence, is studying it and working at it. It's, it's, it's like spiritual weightlifting. It takes work, but once we get... Once I penetrate Latin more, then I start to see the mystery more clearly because I know the words better. And so for lay people, they don't have to, to learn Latin, but to encourage them when they go into a church to genuflect with great reverence and to pay attention and make the sign of the cross and not pretend like we're just, you know, swapping a fly or something, but really paying attention because when we make external gestures of reverence for the glory of God, it can cause an internal humility within us. And that that bodily and spiritual can work together in, in making. And then we have just people that are <clears throat> have been taught to be irreverent, to make fun, to poke around at mass, um, to make fun of the rosary, not to pray it, you know, people can make snide comments about pious people that are truly pious. And that's that's irreverent because that's not humility. Humility means we recognize the level where we're at with God. And if somebody's, you know, pious and they've got a higher level of spiritual life, someone lower making fun of them is not, it's, it's irreverent because we should not hurt those anointed ones of God, like the priests of God, or those religious or lay people who are in the unitive way, we should not get, we should never make comments. It's just, it's not right. So we, the members of the Arch Confraternity of the Holy Face should have reverence because our devotion is to the face of God. And when we go into a church, it's good for us to have a devotion to the Holy Eucharist because one of the devotions is the holy face of the Holy Eucharist. So he's in the tabernacle and he has a face. We can't see it, but he's looking at us when we go into the church. And if we really pay attention to these spiritual realities, we're going to act in such a way that if non-Catholics were to see a total reverent congregation, they would want to convert because they know those people will leave. And I think that was a story. I can't remember the details. Uh, maybe it's St. Cyril Methodius, who um, some men went to go and see a divine liturgy. And when they saw these reverent people having a divine liturgy back probably 1,500 years ago, it was so beautiful. It was like otherworldly that they wanted to become Catholic. And they went to their king and said, the Catholic church is the religion we need to pick. Because I think the king sent them what religion should our kingdom take? So mm -hmm. I'll stop there for a minute. <laughs> you have, a, there's so many questions going through my head as you, as you even speak of, I, I want you to finish just with the last one, which is reversion. Yes. So reversion is a fancy word 
for people coming back to the Catholic Church who have left it, who have stopped practicing it. And so when we say reversion, we also mean conversion, which are people who become Catholic for the first time. So we know in this, in these last decades that so many of our family members and friends have left the Catholic Church. And I've had so many parents come to me and ask me to pray for their fallen away children or cousins. I've got cousins. And this is one thing we formally want to include in the League of St. Martin. So let me just make a distinction here. The Arch Compatory of the Holy Face is an ecclesiastical organization that a Pope approved in 1885, and that's in Tours, France. Okay. Now, the League of St. Martin is a pious association of the faithful that I've started. And our three goals are these. And I'm talking about the last one, which is reversion. We want to pray that people are snatched from going to the gates of hell and go to heaven. And what is required of that? Well, they need to come into the church that Jesus gave us, the church he established to bring people into heaven. So that's why we pray the third aim of reversion. Plus, it's a good marketing ploy because all three words start with R. So it's easy to remember reparation, reverence, and reversion. <laughs> that's that's a very good marketing tool there, Father Carney. <laughs> Yeah. Well, let me ask you. So, all right, what is this devotion then? Is it praying a rosary? Is it adoration of the of the of this of the veil? I mean, where do you is it? I mean, obviously it's not someplace or is it that we can venerate it? I yeah. what is part of this devotion that we could daily um, you know, routinely, you know, kind of be uh inebriated with the face of Jesus within our, and through his passion and our, the fiber of our being and our soul? Yes, very good question. So the six requirements, I'll start with those in the Arch Confraternity, are first of all to enroll, then to receive the registration of enrollment, then to wear an effigy. So like they have a white scapular that has a holy face or a medal or a cross. Then it's to propagate devotion to the Holy Face. Then there's every morning or every day, each member is required to say from the Psalm, from the Psalms, O Lord, show us that face and we shall be saved. And then a Pater, which is an Our Father, an Ave Maria, Hail Mary, and a Gloria Patri, which is one Glory Be. Then the last requirement is they go to the monthly meetings if possible. Okay. So that's, that's how Jesus Christ said to Sister Mary St. Peter to set this up so it would be canonically established. And Jesus told her that if it wasn't established by the hierarchy, that it would have no future. Mm -hmm. So that's, well, let's put that to the side. Now, on top of that, this devotion has so many rich um, prayers. One of them is called the chaplet of the holy face, hmm. which is repeating the first verse of Psalm 67, 33 times in honor of Jesus Christ, his five senses, and his three years of public life. So the words are, Arise, O Lord, and let the enemies be defeated, and let all that hate thee flee from before thy face. Now, that that's Psalm 67. That's Psalm 67, which incidentally comes from the minor exorcism that Pope Leo XIII approved of, that exorcists use as a diagnostic whenever they have somebody that might be under the interference of the de demonic. Mm -hmm. So this is like, I've been telling people, I'm making this, I'm coining this. It's like a mini exorcism for lay people and for anybody, really. Because only a priest can do the minor exorcism over a person mm -hmm. with the permission of a bishop. How so, many times do you say that, chaplet? How is it? Once a day. Uh, it, what is it? It's 30, 37, to six, Psalm 67. How, what is it, the chaplet? Yeah, 30, it's 
So you it's, say that, and then there's what? Yeah, there's. Let me get mine. Is out. it like a rosary on the beads? Yeah, it's it's like a rosary. Okay. But it has six septics. Septics. Oh. So I've got here's. Okay, here we go. I can see you. You can see. Oh, that? I see okay. the holy face right there. Okay. And then there's six here. Yeah. And so that's where we do Psalm 67, and then we do a Gloria Patri, and then et cetera, five times six, so that's 30. And then the last three are done in honor of the three years of the public life of Jesus Christ. And there's some extra prayers, too, on it. And there's a lot of different ways to pray it. So just like the St. Michael the Archangel prayer has been translated into like 10 different translations in English, People don't need to get scrupulous about this, but I'm just telling you generally how to pray it. Mm -hmm. So it's a very powerful weapon um, against the revolutionary men, but it also helps us to make reparation for the five senses of Jesus, especially during his passion. So there's that. And then there's two litanies to the Holy Face that are just wonderful. There's a novena to the holy face that's is so beautiful. We've got it on our website. Then there's um, rosaries. There's a short form and a long form of how to pray a rosary in honor of the holy face of Jesus. So that's where you take a real rosary and pray the rosary. Uh -huh. You just have meditations on the holy face of Jesus. Then there's prayers from Blessed Pius the Ninth. He wrote a prayer on the Holy Face. St. Augustine wrote a prayer on the Holy Face. St. Francis wrote a prayer. There's the quarantine of St. Louis. There, there's a manual called the Manual of the Arch Comforter of the Holy Face. If anyone types that in on a, a browser or a website, they can go find it online. Yes, we the, what is it? Let me write that down. Emmanuel. It's called the Manual of the Arch Comforter of the Holy Face. Okay. We actually print them and we sell them online on our web. Is that the uh, martinians.org? Yes. Okay. We sell them for $40 a piece. And there's a young man that makes a leather cover on it. So it's a real nice prayer book. We didn't just want it to be a little flimsy thing. Right. Gotcha. But something that people want to use every day. Okay. Well, that's, not, I mean, that's the whole world. I mean, we've been bombarded with. Uh, influential, uh, demonic, and, and you know, attacks at all different levels. So this is certainly a time to be uh, uh, dedicated to prayer and uh, doing the chaplet. And I, I'm going to go online and for sure um, get the prayer book. And uh, you have said so much, Father. I mean, I think people are going to have to re-look at this video a few times because there's just so much to to write down at the. But this is why we're so blessed to have you. So we we have the opportunity to always go back and ref, mm -hmm. reference reference it, and then to get your your books as well. And uh, so uh, so the um, so that's the devotion. Um, now here's the thing. I mean, I could, a lot of people are, could be thinking maybe, well, there's devotions to every, everything. There's so many devotions out, out there. I mean, you would be all day long praying. I mean, even the prayers for what we do for the Holy face, it, that's abundant, you know, even though you, you know, you get used to them. So, um, I wonder if people are going to say, how do I, am I going to have to start selecting which prayers I, I, you know, need to pray for protection. And I, I know there's a slew of people of this kingdom that love the Lord with all their heart, mind, and soul, and want to be you know, just crushed, you know, on fire with his love. And so, uh, you know, it, it's, it could, has that ever approached you people saying to you, gee, yeah, father, Carney, 
uh, which devotion am I supposed to do? I want to do the best and I want to pray my rosary. I want to pray my chapter of divine mercy. I have my prayers to St. Michael, the archangel and pr protection. There's different scapulars, you know, conversion, green scapular, then the Mount Carmel scapular, then there's the white scapular. If people approach you on like, like what, what to do, what direction are they being called? Yeah, that's a good question because I'm a spiritual director and I don't have room to take anyone else. But <laughs> knowing that a lot of people that are interested are going to have their spiritual director say, we already have too much on your plate. Well, that's the beauty of this devotion. In the Arch Confraternity, it only adds one minute a day to your prayer regimen. That's the, the requirement. And one hour a month to go to the monthly meetings. So I tell people, if it's overwhelming, you've got too much on your plate, you can research this still and just do the one minute prayer and see where God takes you because you'll, you'll know if this is for you or not. So I tell people to, to, to do that. And what's beautiful is I see souls, they get into it and they see how valuable it is and they get drawn into it and they get approval from their spiritual director to to do the chaplet once a day and it's not something that's overtaxing it's not like you know how the devil pulls someone to do too much of the good or be too lazy and do not any of the good well just starting slow god gives the grace to those souls that want him to fill them their soul up with him mm -hmm. so that's what i tell people and because there's a lot of graces that come when people start just the minimum that they get on fire with this and God draws them and accelerates his coming into them so that they really want this because this devotion is very special because Jesus told sister Mary St. Peter, this is one of the most beautiful things under the sun next to the sacraments. This is one of the most beautiful things that heaven will give to the church. That's beautiful. So, there's a lot to be unpacked there. Wow, I, I I think that you need more than a million people. I think you need the whole world. I, as many millions of mi millions, I don't know how many millions of people there. There's definitely, uh, you know, that would be my goal. <laughs> because baby steps. <laughs> well, baby, I, one baby got, step for God is like a huge one for us. So yeah, we'll just have him. Have but to. I got my inspiration from the secret of the Holy Rosary that St. Louis de Montfort wrote. And he commented there was a priest, his name is Blessed Alan de la Rocha. And he preached the rosary when it almost went away back in the 15th century. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, and he got 100,000 people to sign up for the confraternity of the Holy Rosary before he died. Okay. So we have the internet. We've got people like you. I think that a million is a modest number before I die. And if we get a million before long, praise be God, then he'll give me another goal. Right. But we, we need to uh, proclaim this in churches. Uh, go to your pastors and and uh, um, uh, priests and um, just missions and just, you know, people have local prayer groups in their homes or prayer groups everywhere. Uh, for sure, this is, this is definitely attainable. And so, you know, what you just said is the, the rosary, this is how the rosary is connected to the devotion of the holy face is what, through what you were saying through St. Louis de Montfort in the conform, uh, conformity, right? Yeah, it's, it's really important in this last age of the church. I mean, that you know, I'm just considering four ages, the 500-year block since it started. Well, this is the Marian age. You know, we've had the French school uh, back in the 17, uh, 16th, 17th, and 18th centuries that taught about a deep devotion to Mary, like St. John Hughes and St. Louis de Montfort and Cardinal Berrier, Boyer. But I think that people that, make the total consecration to slavery, to Our Lady, that that's a requirement first. And being devoted, devoted to the rosary is a requirement. And then I think Our Lady molds souls that are in that 
to be able to approach the face of Jesus in a particular way that's very efficacious. So that's how I was drawn into this devotion was through Our Lady. And I think that's how most people that I talk to, they really take seriously their total consecration to Mary. And she gives them this as a gift if they, they live it out. You know what? You know what, Father, I have to, I just finished my consecra uh, consecration, um, St. Louis de Montfort 33 day consecration. And uh, every day I say the uh, consecration now, and then here you are just, you know, it's just hitting me, you know, to do that. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. So this is how, how you started. This is how you, um, the, how you got started in this devotion was uh, praying the rosary. Our well, lady brought you into that. I mean, that's part of it. That, sh that was the, let's say that was the, um, or, or how did you discover it? I'm sorry. I didn't mean yeah, that was the remote preparation, but the, um, immediate preparation was this, this is a good story. So after about four years with the Benedictines of Mary, I got permission to start a community of men. And I asked the um, prioress, what, you know, I want to write a newsletter. What should be the topic? And she can't talk to me except a few times a year. And this was Christmas Day. She was allowed to talk to me. So she's very holy. She is esteemed by people outside of the Abbey as a saint. And I think, she, I think she's on her, on the road. I hope she doesn't hear any of what I'm saying. Um, but she said, Father, go to the holy face. So I did. I just, okay, that brought me in. And then this lady from North Carolina sent me the Golden Arrow book. So, I, you know, I'm very lazy when it comes to going forward. But God just gave me these things. So I started reading the Golden Arrow prayer. And then someone sent me the Holy Man of Tours, which is about Venerable Leo de Pont. And... Then I read how November 11th is so important because St. Martin is one of the three patrons of the Arch Confraternity, the other two being St. Louis, the King of France, and St. Michael. So anyways, I wrote the newsletter. I started to get more involved in the devotion, started to pray it. And I'm like, wow, this devotion is really powerful. And God started just opening doors for me to start promoting it. And it's... It, it grew from one principal source, and that was a contemplative life of a nun. Because of her life of contemplation, God put in her mind to tell me that. And the best things in the church start from the contemplative life. Mm -hmm. Because that's where God speaks to the heart, just like Elijah on the mountain. I love that example in the Old Testament where God was heard in the, the, whisper. the, the whisper of a breeze. Mm -hmm. not in the earthquakes mm -hmm. so that's how it started and god wanted me to get involved in this devotion that way because then i can share that beautiful story with others mm -hmm. and it's also on your birthday <laughs> november, <right>. 11th. <laughs> november 11th so you were united when you were born <laughs> you right. didn't know you were pegged so, to that <laughs> saint martin of tours is the one of the, the patrons well that's where this devotion is seated is in tours france it's a very holy city there's so many saint bishops in the martyrology for tours. I can't wait to go there someday. But anyways, Saint Martin actually drew Sister Mary Saint Peter and Venerable Leo de Pont from different parts of the world into that same city so they could meet and be the first promoters of this devotion. By the way, Holy Face devotion is old, but it's also new. It's old and that we are devoted to the Holy Face of God, but it's new in that Jesus told Sister Mary St. Peter in a particular way, God wants to use the devotion of the Holy Face to destroy the revolution against God. So St. Martin, November 11th being my birthday, <laughs> and that's his feast day of going to heaven. He was a military man. He was in the Roman army, and you know, he paid for half of his Roman cloak, and the other half was paid by the Roman Empire. And that's why when he saw the naked man, he tore half of it with his sword and gave it his portion to the naked man. And soon after that, 
he told his general that he was done serving the emperor and he was going to serve another emperor and that would be God. So he became a Catholic. So he became a bishop in Tours and this is where this devotion is seated. And it's a beautiful story. I won't be able to get into it here of how Sister Mary St. Peter, the main visionary, how she moved from somewhere in France called Rennes all the way to Tours because she wanted to join Carmel in a place closer to her home, but it wasn't open. So she consecrated her uh, avocation to St. Martin with some relics. And St. Martin opened up the doors and she was open. She got invited to come to Tours. And when she went there, she knew that this was her home for the rest of her life. Wow. And Venerable Leo de Pont was born in a, in a Caribbean island called Martinique. So that's not by coincidence. That's by providence. Martin, you know, St. Martin. And there's a long story, but the short of it is his wife was dying at a young age and they had a daughter. And her wish on her deathbed was have Henrietta taught by the Ursulines and tours like I was. So that's how he came to tours. So St. Martin pulled him there too. So it's just amazing. And, and since November 11th was my birthday, I was reading and researching. I want to be an apostle of this. And look, God has given me that wish. No, he and, certainly has. And John, it's just the... Promises, you know, there's promises for those who pray the rosary. Well, there's promises for those who pray the devotion, holy face. And there's beautiful ones. And one of them is those who promote devotion to my holy face, their faces will shine with a unique brightness in heaven for eternity. It's I'm paraphrasing, but it's just things like that just fire me up. So if people just put their feet in the water, they might just say, oh, this isn't for me. Or they might say, wow, that's nice, warm water. I'm going to get into this devotion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. All of this is wonderful. I love what you said about, uh, you know, contemplative meditation and Elijah, because that's how Carmel started, you know. Yeah. So I, um, so anyway, let me ask you, I have so many questions. Um, uh, is this devotion, would you say this is a blueprint? to overturn the elite's desire to enslave us. Yeah, it is because if the one who gave us the curse has the power to take away the curse, then that's how you win the game. So Jesus told Sister Mary St. Peter, my father is going to give a punishment to the world and that he's going to send revolutionary men. And Jesus even mentions it in other revelations to Sister Mary St. Peter, how communism is are the greatest traitors to the Catholic Church. So Jesus gives us this devotion as a blueprint of overthrowing the revolution. It's not by us being the best politicians and becoming president of the U.S. or becoming the best senator in Florida to overthrow this. No, being the best Catholics we can, what happens is God then will start to fight this war for us. Mm -hmm. He'll take away the power of elites and they'll give um, a beautiful triumph of the American heart and a triumph of the Catholic Church, which I don't know what that's going to look like because I am not a, a visionary or anything like that. I'm just in cells. So I'm just telling you what I've learned. But if a million people, or if you say a million times whatever, people get devoted to this devotion and, and love Our Lady of Fatima as well, guess what? We're going to receive a great blessing because God always blesses those people who turn to him and do what he asks. He, he'll take away the curse. He'll give us a blessing. But I think there's a preordained amount of people that need to step into this devotion and live it out faithfully and piously. What that number is, I don't know. I just put out a million as a start to see, okay, let's see what happens when we do that. Well, how many do you have now? Maybe, I'm guessing the Arch Confraternity has probably received 5,000 enrollments since I was promoting this a number of years ago. And since this book came out uh, last summer, I think this is a great stride to get it going. 
But this could be something where, you know, if those first 5,000 people became devoted, then they will be so fired up that it'll be contagious at that That's point. Right. Then it starts to, to get on fire. And I think the fire of the love of God through his holy face and through Our Lady is definitely something very positive as a Catholic to be working towards instead of being so depressed by the current narrative that's coming from the world elites in the world. That's right. And I'm going to tell you something right now. We don't have to look at revolutionary back then. We can look at it right now, what's happening. And it's happening quickly. Uh, I mean, I just found out that, did you know that the United States has a communist website? And they blatantly, you can go on there and tell you what they want to do and what and how they intended to make the United States communist or it's already on the way to socialism. Uh, you know, this, this is not, uh, this is providential and very timely that uh, we are blessed to have your presence here today. And um, I'm blessed and I'm, I'm sure just listening to you, everyone else that sees this will just, you know, want to uh, get the books and, and, and join and start praying uh, the, the chaplet and um, find out about the one minute prayer or what, just get your feet wet, look at everything. And uh, I mean, we spend a lot of time anyway on the website looking at other stuff. We can spend a little time understanding and looking at this to see how this would uh, be part of our uh, prayer that that we have. I mean, you know, like I have to go to mass every day when possible. That, to me, I I don't know what that would be without having Jesus. So um, it's it's this you know the the same in Saint Therese of Lisieux. Didn't she say you know every time she had Eucharist, she didn't know how you know she'd just be crushed with the fire of God. How she could you know absorb. And I'm paraphrasing that, of course, but yeah. so this devotion is important and I think it's important for priests. So the question is, is why should priests incorporate this devotion in order to hurl these instruments of the passion toward the enemies during the mass? Because like St. Mother Teresa, St. Teresa uh, said, we don't need priests, we need holy priests. And, uh, and right now uh, there we've, you know, we've heard of so much corruption that's come down through the Vatican, things of that nature. We we know that, and but still, there are holy priests there and uh, around. And why why should these priests be incorporated? We need to bring this force to priests because they're so set up with administrative work; they're forgetting their prayer life and their devotion first to Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, priests that are listening we should consider making reparation for priests for our own kind. Um, and I think if priests get enrolled in this, then they'll share the spiritual firehouse of St. Therese of Lisieux, of the child Jesus and of the Holy Face, because she enrolled in the Comp Arch Comp Fraternity in 1885, right when Pope Leo XIII approved of it. So we'll get her spiritual powerhouse and then there in the old missal, and there's a section in the back called um, masses at certain locations and certain times. And there's several masses during uh, the time before Lent, up to Ajazima, and the time during Lent that specifically are concerned about Jesus Christ and his passion. So one of them is the mass of the five wounds. One of them is the mass of the nails and of the crown of thorns. Another mass is of the spear that pierced the side of Jesus. Another mass is of the passion of Jesus Christ. There's another mass of the Sindona or the shroud of Turin. And there's a few more that I'm not thinking of, but Jesus told Sister Mary St. Peter Oh, that I wish that there would be members of this future arch confraternity that would hurl the weapons that were used to hurt me. The nails, the spear, the cross, the crown of thorns, the scourge, the pillar, 
et cetera, all those things. Jesus is asking Sister Saint, our Sister Saint Pierre, to hurl these images spiritually at the enemy, at the demon and his agents. So when priests are saying these masses um, during the specific times of the year, they can make that intention when they're praying, you know, holding their hands like this. That those elements are going to disturb the infernal spirits and to get them all fighting against each other and to get the their agents, you know, the, the ones that are working underneath these demons in the, in the human race that are trying to enslave us all, get them all confused. And that's, that's how God uh, destroyed the enemies of Israel in the Old Testament is one king, I think it was the grandson of King David, he sent the singing man in the vanguard to go, and then when the enemy saw this, the men were chanting the Psalms of David. Great is the mercy of God. You know, they were chanting that. Well, what did the enemy do? Instead of fighting Israel, it fought themselves and they decimated themselves and it was a bloodbath and Israel triumphed and it was God that joined the war at that point. So that's what this devotion will do. I think it'll turn the key for God to start engaging against these enemies because they're done once that happens Amen. it's a tough game so we have the secret of how to do it right here and that's another thing i want to mention is sister mary saint peter was told by jesus that this devotion would take off a little bit at the beginning but then it would kind of die out until later on and there will be new apostles that would promote it in the future so when i read that i'm saying i'm, I'm signing up god if you want me i will i will be an apostle and here we are. And so I hope five years from now, there's hundreds of priests like me doing what I'm doing because it's just, it is so much fun engaging in the enemy according to the powers that God gave us in our priesthood. Mm -hmm. And another thing I'll mention too, is this is this devotion was actually promulgated by the and priests. There's not very many devotions that did that. Like the rosaries promulgated by Dominicans, a religious community. Well, this was promoted by the canons secular of Tours, France. So those canons are the Austin priests. And they are the ones that are attached to the cathedral and, and chant the office and, and take care of the, the pontifical masses there. Well, they were the ones that God chose to promote this. And they were called the priests of the holy faith. But then their community was... Um, disproved in the Vatican. And I don't know all the reasons behind that, but I think that the infiltration was already happening and that communism was very scared of this getting big. So. Well, I want to be apostle. Okay. You're doing it right here by uh, interviewing me. I, I, I hope a lot of people raise their hands or just have it embedded with that cross, <clears throat> you know, embedded in their heart. And uh, and uh, definitely sign up and, and uh, go to the Arch Confraternity of the Holy Face. And um, did you give us the website where we go for that? Or is that part of the Mar martinians.org? It's on the martinians.org. Okay, we'll just go there first and then we can get the, the information. And this is the way we're going to triumph in, in our church, God's church. Us, sounds good. The whole people, holy people of God who love God and want to to be the light of him and let our faces shine so brightly that people will want what we have. So, and we can see that in you that most definitely. So with you, you, get dirt, you certainly uh, shine with humility, but tremendous uh, passion for our lady, uh, our the face of Jesus, the passion of Jesus, and uh, a love for our Blessed Mother. So that being said, Father, there's just so much I'm going to, I hope people uh, go out and get your book and get to martinians.org and become a, a register and become a, a, a member and start praying the chaplet. And, um, um, and we hope to have you back so we can find out how it's going, if that's okay with you. Love Absolutely. that. And we're hoping that um, to end, uh, you would be so uh, kind and holy as to bless us. Sure. Benedictio Demni Potentis, Patris et Fili, Spiritus Antichinit, Super Vos et Maniat Semper. Amen. 
Amen. Thank you, Father. Hope to uh, chat with you soon. And um, we'll um, be sending this off now to the webmaster to get it uh, set up to be disseminated to all different platforms. And I'm sure I'll be chatting with you soon. Thanks again. God bless you. Thank you, John, for having me on. Okay. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. God bless.